Okay, so good morning. It is currently 6 a.m. Um, let's get right to it. So basically, my uh, movement was kicking a soccer ball. Okay, so obviously the act of kicking a ball is actually considered situational. There's many uh, dependent factors, many many things that vary. Um, for example, the forces used in different kicks can vary. Um, the main objective, obviously, is just kicking in general, but it can be, like I said, achieved in various ways. Uh, the distance can also be determined by the amount of force that is utilized in the kick from a player. Um, one of the examples is the uh, is the cross cross shot and the goal kick, which may actually require a lot more force than we think. Um, which is compared to a pass kick, which would be much less of a force because you're trying to aim for a player. So kicking of a soccer ball, the anatomy involves standing, walking, running, and kicking. Uh, the femoral head fits perfectly to the half to the half of the socket. Uh, formation of it concaves it concave is a decreased concave within the pelvis. Um, it allows femur to rotate easily around the axis, cartilage coatings on the um, acetabulum for smooth motion at the joint, uh, basically better movement of the flexion, um, and it promotes extension to the ligaments around the joints. So the mental preparation, um, basically it's important to to mentally prepare because it ensures the body is ready for the kick. The players within the field need to think constantly. The mental preparation is important in ensuring the ball set up, um, which then promotes laces and just inside the foot. Uh, it's just basically preparing your body. This, this achieves the intended kick, uh, which then achieve to the intended objective. Laces kicked. So this is with toes done. Well, it's also achieved with power in the knee flexion. It is utilized for the crosses and corner kicks. Um, it can also be used for goal kicks and shooting, which I think we find is more common for the corner kicks. The inside of the foot ankle is rotated out in order to achieve the required movement and surprisingly enough the toes are pointed up to allow the kick which i played soccer and i actually did not realize that that's what we would do um until i learned about it now um but it's utilized for passing the ball or finishing or shooting pretty much. The stages, um, you do the approach, the planting of the foot, um, cocking of the kicking limb, so your left or right leg, the swing, the contact of the ball, and the follow through. So now we'll go through the stages. Um, stage one, the approach. It's this stage is important since it's associated with the mental preparation for the kicker, um, which involves the set play leading to the running up of an at an angle. The shot in which involves a setup touch or the anticipation preparing someone that they can be ready to kick. Uh, the cross which is associated with the touch to the outside of the foot kicking the ball it helps in creating an angle pretty much stage two foot planting this is an actual physical preparation of the foot for kicking without causing any major fractures um, it also helps the determination of the direction of the kick it's done on the sagittal plane and 
pretty much the foot planting leads to the extension of the knee and the stride and the plantar flexion. Um, it's likely to extend the dorsal flexion. However, the probability of such occurrence is based on the stage of the kick. Um, sometimes the objective is also utilized to determine the circumstances. Now, cocking of the kicking limb. This is considered an important movement in creating power. Uh, the power producing movement provides the necessary force for the kick. This is achieved at the uh, knee flexion as the main component of the stage. Um, the plantar flexion is achieved when it comes to kicking the foot. There is there is actually an increased hip extension. And like I said, I don't like I, I've played soccer since I was four and I didn't realize we did all of this until now. So this is really cool to me. Um, but it basically achieves the possible abduction of the hip, um, which is important in storing up the force and the energy that will transfer to the swing during the kicking process. Next, we have the actual swing. Um, this is important since it helps with the extension of the knee. The swing does promote hip flexion as well, but it also achieves the plantar flexion. Uh, this is what we would call your explosive aerobic moment or movement. Sorry, there is need for the torque and the moment of the arm, um, and that's because it's indicated that the longer the limb and the shorter the move, the moment of the arm, the higher the velocity upon which the kick is generated. So ball contact. This involves a swing in order to bring the leg in contact with the ball during the kick. Um, most of the steps that are involved are, are an extension form from the swing stage. Uh, therefore, the extension of the knee still takes place. There is the continuation of the hip flexion and of the plantar flexion. Um, some dorsiflexion of the foot um, has been, that has been planted uh, is involved as well with this. Uh, the follow through, I'm sorry, uh, the photo covers up the title, but this is the follow through. Um, this is the continuation stage of the ball contact pretty much. This is the part where your leg follows through, literally follows through and and continues to move forward with the ball, which hence then the contact with the ball still continues. Um, again, hip flexion and knee, knee extension continues, but the foot also begins to relax at this stage. Uh, it releases the energy and the forces gathered during the swing that is extent excessive. Um, it's, it's followed by the reverse. Uh, the extension of the hip helps in bringing the leg back down. So you went up already, and now you're bringing that foot back down. Uh, the athlete will then land back to the shooting foot. So laces in the upper body. So when kicking a soccer ball, uh, it's minimal movements that are achieved on the upper body. Uh, the major movement occurs on the frontal plane. Uh, the minimum movement is important since it achieves an increased arm abduction, lateral flexion that is achieved at the torso and con continued abduction of the arm. Inside the foot. So the changes that occur to the inside of the foot while kicking a ball, similar stages are normalized are normally realized when using the inside of the foot while kicking a ball. Um, this is mostly on the transverse plane now. Um, it promotes the stability of the leg, the flexibility, especially around the knees that is needed for proper movement. Um, aversion occurs in the foot 
the, there is a lateral rotation which is needed in the internal knee. Um, and honestly, guys, with such movements, it's easy to promote flexibility, allowing the movement of the outside foot. So the main muscles in, so in kicking a soccer ball are the, the quadriceps, hamstrings, um, so as our poses. Besides, I'm sorry, I mess it up every time. The gastro gastronemus, adductors of the leg, abdominals, gluteus maximum, and the minimum. Um, again, I'm sorry for my pronunciation. <laughs> I'm not the best at them. Um, let's see. For bones and joints, uh, we all know bones and joints also facilitate the movement of the legs and the hip, like the muscles. Kicking a football, kicking a soccer ball basically, uh, usually utilizes the bones and the joints in the lower body, tarsals, the metal tarsals, the phalanges, which are all located on the bones, which allow the creation of the contact surface that strikes uh, the ball. Tibia and the tarsals help with the formation of the ankle joint. It's slightly flit, flexed and at the same time rigid. Um, when one is kicking a ball. There's no power that is lost during the, during the, the kicking phase. Uh, tibia and the femur extend as the thigh muscles which contract to allow movement. And the hip is made up of the femur and the ilium which swings forwards and backward and in, during the movement that is considered the hip flexion. So the knee extension, uh, power that is needed to promote an effective kick is accumulated along the knees. This action or actions help in straightening the knees, uh, which make it easier to kick a soccer ball by promoting the extension. Um, the extension occurs with the contraction of the muscles that are located on the front of the thigh. Um, and what's interesting is the contractions promote proper extension of the knee to allow movement of legs accordingly when kicking a soccer ball. Uh, the vast, vastus lateris, the rectus femoris, the vastus medallius, and the vastus intermedius. Um, they all work by sharing a common intersection insertion point at the top of the tibia, which is located just below the patella or the kneecap. So hip flexion. Muscles that include the uh, sosas majors. I don't think that's right. So I guess majors uh, and minor. So the, the minor and the iliacus ensure flexion is successfully achieved. Um, it operates with the quadricep muscles of the rectus femoris. They are responsible for most of the power which is needed to kick a ball. Uh, the three hamstring muscles, including the uh, semitendinosus, the semimembranosus and the biceps femoris need to relax accordingly. Um, tight hamstrings may hamper the ability for one to kick effectively. And it does cause an injury. We see that a lot of pool, pulled hamstring muscles, a lot of just tight cramps, um, especially when it's cold. The notable stabilizers, so we have to promote proper movement of muscles and joints in the body. Um, each muscle works so that they can hold different parts of the body up. The kick can be delivered from the solid base to promote better support. The muscles are sometimes considered the stabilizers. One is able to stand upright and swing the kick to come into contact with the ball. However, it's not as 
as um, it's not as powerful as a kick would be with an approach. Um, the rectus abdominis and the abdominal muscles are used. Erector spinae muscles and the back muscles and the gluteal muscles are are the ones that are all located on the butt or around it. So the biomechanics. Okay. Several artists, uh, excuse me, not artists, scientists. Several scientists have focused on studying the element of kicking. It promotes the advantages to understanding the work, the working of different muscles, bones, and joints. Um, it's important to understand the relaxation, extension, and contraction of the muscles, among others. Um, because if we didn't understand that, if we didn't know what was going on within the muscles, we wouldn't have answers as to why we were cramping out or why things would occur, uh, injuries would occur. Kicking starts with the placement of the supporting foot, which is located besides the ball. Constant involvement in different phases of the kick. And the conclusion, there are a number of supporting factors within the joints that promote stability during kicking. Uh, there are a number of tendons and muscles that provide stability, flexibility, and better movement. The act of kicking a ball is considered situational. The main factors depend on where the person is kicking and the objective of the kick. Um, so what's the goal there? Uh, kicks can be different in different positions of the field and the objective can be achieved after the kick. And these are my references. So I hope y'all enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit something about, you know, soccer. Um, like I said, I did play for quite some time. So I was going through this research and reading all about all of this information. And I actually started doing the movement. And as I was doing the movements, I had my hands and so, uh, slightly pressed up so I could feel it. And so to actually experience it at different levels uh, was super interesting and super fascinating to me. Um, thanks for watching and I hope everyone has a great uh, spring semester.